What's going on guys? My name is Jake. I'm a system administrator at an MSP and today I want to discuss some networking tools and concepts that I actually use in IT that are super useful. First and foremost, the most important and time-saving command that I've ever learned, you go to the Windows search bar and you type ncpa.cpl. ncpa.cpl opens up the interface properties so that you can adjust IPv4 properties like DNS, IP address, things like that. It's super useful. You can turn off IPv6 from there. You can see which network adapters it has. Sometimes it has these virtual ones for VPNs and stuff like that. Very useful command. And I used to, when I first started, spend way too much time trying to find this menu where I can see all of the different properties of these network adapters. Secondly, super duper important, I'm gonna say subnetting. Subnetting is a concept that people tend to hate. People in IT don't tend to like networking. Some people do, I like it. Some people just have a knack for it. I feel like I have a knack for it, but I also studied subnetting a lot when I was studying for my Network Plus, and then later when I was studying for the CCNA, it really got ingrained in my brain. Subnetting is super important in actual IT because if a device has an IP address, the IP address could be the same, but if the subnet mask is different, it's gonna think it's on a different network. And it's not gonna be able to communicate on layer three with other devices on the network. So this is very important to understand. Also knowing which available IPs there are within a subnet. Say you have a slash 24, the most common subnet, 10.0.0.1 would be your first IP address if it's 10.0.0.0. And knowing that you have from 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.0.255 is super important. Knowing if there's a DHCP scope within that subnet, super important. We'll talk about that one in just a sec. And so then you can identify, hey, which available IP addresses do I have? Which are within the scope that I shouldn't be assigning? Where should I be making reservations? Are you setting your IP statically? I hope not, but understanding that context and DHCP and first IP and last IP and broadcast address is all super duper important when you're actually troubleshooting network issues. And at the end of this video, I'll give you an example of where all of this came into play. After subnetting is default gateway. It's very important to know what devices are using when they send traffic out to places that they don't know at layer three. Because again, this can mean the difference between having connectivity and not having connectivity in a network, having the right default gateway. All of these can be found by a command IP config slash all, but it's important to understand, hey, what is a default gateway? What does the subnet actually tell me? when you're troubleshooting this lack of connectivity issue, which you see so often in IT. After this, I'm gonna say DNS and DHCP. DNS is important once you get to a level two, level three position at a company, I think, once you become a system administrator. Understanding public DNS, private DNS, how your devices actually resolve domain names on the network, very important. You do a lot of stuff with internal DNS, forward lookup zones, at tier two, at system administrator. You do a lot with public DNS, A records, text records to verify ownership of certain domains, seeing which domains have action. You spend a lot of time in GoDaddy. You spend a lot of time in network solutions. You spend a lot of time in, in Cloudflare looking at DNS and it's important to be able to understand this. And it's like, it's an easy concept, but it's a little bit of a foreign concept that takes a bit of time to actually understand, hey, what is an A record? What is a text record? What is a C name? If I change an A record, what does it actually do? Points that to a different DNS. What does the text verification actually do for an SSL cert? Very important concept. And then DHCP, knowing which addresses are available to your devices, which addresses are being handed out, seeing which devices have a lease. Maybe there's inactive leases that are still there. Being able to look into Windows Server DHCP or a Cisco switch or router or firewall and say, hey, this DHCP pool is full. That's why my new device that I plugged into the network is not getting an IP. That's something super common that we see at level two is full DHCP scope. And if there's a bunch of random static IPs around the DHCP scope or within the DHCP scope, you can have some duplicate IPs. If you want to extend the scope, it's really hard because you have to avoid these conflicts of IPs. But the idea of DHCP and understanding where your device gets its IP address from is very important. DHCP doesn't only give out IP address too. It also does give out those DNS servers and it also does give out that default gateway, which is the device says, hey, I don't know where to send this it goes to that. That's all important to have uniform. And if you're setting your devices statically, it gets tough to keep track of, especially when your network grows. When you get 200, 300, 500, 1,000 devices on the network, it gets 
exponential. It's crazy. So understanding DHCP, how it works, setting it up, super duper important as well. After this, we already talked about IP config slash all. Absolutely know that command. You're going to use it all the time because you can see things like this. DHCP, DNS, default gateway, subnet mask, all of that type of stuff and use that data to help you when you're troubleshooting another device, for example. Like oftentimes I'll take data off of a functional device and try and apply that to a non-functional device. After this, very simple commands, but very important. Ping and traceroute. I wish ping and traceroute were used more often by level one techs, honestly. A lot of times somebody will say, hey, I have a network printer that's not connecting. It's not working. It's throwing some error or something like this. Oftentimes my first question is, okay, does it ping? Or, hey, I can't domain join this computer or I don't have, I'm not getting GPO correctly. Okay, does the domain controller ping? Super important questions to know, hey, can this computer reach this other computer? Can this computer reach this server or this printer? It's a really good tell of network connectivity between two devices. And then trace route, hey, I'm not able to connect to X situation, to X place, like a, let's say we have a vendor and we need to connect to their server. We're in a trace route. You can see where along the path that traffic is dropping. And then you can use that where along the path with your network diagram or whatever documentation you have to say, hey, okay, here's where it's dropping. Let me give you an example. We have a company that's in Azure and we have tools, monitoring tools that need to go onto their servers. Their servers weren't getting these monitoring tools. We ran a trace route from the server to where our monitoring tools sit. And we saw, hey, it goes hop and then it stops at this third hop. This third hop, had an IP address and it was an Azure firewall. So I was able to go to internal and say, hey, I can see traffic is stopping here at the Azure firewall level. Can we make a rule allowing traffic over 443 to this destination and from this destination in this Azure firewall? They were able to set it up. We were good to go. Lastly, something that's really important is MAC address. Just understanding what a MAC address is and what you can do with a MAC address. You can look at layer two. You can, it's a good identifier because you can find it in the switch itself. So if you, if I have a question of, Hey, why is this device not getting connectivity? I'm going to ask the level one, what's the Mac address of the device? Cause I can hop into the switch. I can look at the switch port and maybe see, Hey, it doesn't have this certain VLAN. And we'll talk about VLANs in a second. Hey, the switch port is turned off. Hey, port security has pinged, even though we rarely use port security, but port security has pinged and this traffic's not going to go over this port. And that's what's going on. The way I'm able to identify the switch port is with the Mac address. It's easier than tracing from the device to the switch. Sometimes you gotta do that, but a lot of times that's a pain in the booty because it goes from the device to the wall, the ethernet port from the wall goes to a patch panel, it's hard to see, everything's behind, and from the patch panel it goes to the switch, things aren't labeled correctly, super common situation. So understanding MAC address and the importance of MAC address, very clutch. Okay, so I tried to keep this more of a level one networking troubleshooting, like stuff that everyone's gonna use, ncpa.cpl, setting those IPv4 properties to obtain an address automatically or setting it as a static address if you want to test. I forgot one important mention, and that is the network reset command. If you think DNS is being weird, the device is set with a static IP on-prem and then they took it home or something like that and it's not working correctly and you have admin creds, trying out network reset as a command in Windows, not even in the command line, you just go down to the Windows bar, you type in network reset, It'll reset all of those adapter properties. It's very useful. It'll set your device to grab an IP automatically if there's a DHCP server, which if someone had it set statically at work and then they took their device home, your home router is your DHCP server. So it'll grab an IP and you can revive a device that seemed like it was dead. Very important. Okay, now I want to go over a few honorable mentions that I use a lot now that I'm a system administrator, but I didn't really use a ton at tier one, but also... They help me now understand the context behind a a lot of these things. I should note as well, CCNA, the certification, really took me from being a super basic at networking to being in a position where at least I can diagnose issues, get to a root cause, and say, hey, I'm pretty dang sure this is what's going on. If a configuration change needs to be made, I can send that over to the network engineers and they can actually just get the change made. I save them a lot of time. I enjoy the process and I solve problems. It's really fun. Okay, so the things that I learned at tier two that I use a lot, VLANs, VLANs and switches. Hey, does it have the right VLAN? Does it have the voice VLAN? Does it have the data VLAN? Which VLAN is it on? How does that map to a certain subnet? Is it in the right subnet for that VLAN? All of that stuff, super duper important. I do a lot of stuff in switches. Honestly, 
I don't do any routing. I don't do any OSPF, EIGRP, none of that. Because we have relatively small orgs and all of the routing stuff is usually between the org and a vendor. And that's for our network engineers. Layer three switches are used quite a bit for us. Understanding that oftentimes that's set as the default gateway for a device. And that's relaying certain traffic to another situation, another place is really important too. Having a layer three switch set as default gateway, that's a DHCP relay, for example, is a situation that we see a lot. So layer three switching, but just general switching is something that I'm doing all of the time. Hopping into switches, looking at MAC address tables, looking at switch port configurations, looking at VLANs, things like that, super common. Firewall rules and ACLs are very important as well. Being able to see on a firewall, hey, certain traffic is being blocked because of a certain parameter, a certain condition. I'll give you a good example. I once had a ticket where I was trying to adjust some printer settings so that they would use a certain service to scan to email called direct send. I troubleshot this ticket for about 20 hours and the network engineer finally showed me that there was a block on the firewall and that's what was blocking me all along connecting to Microsoft's server. It was very frustrating, but it was a big aha moment that was like, hey, this is possible. I did everything else. I ruled out everything else. And the NE was like, yep, it was from an audit. This is why it was blocked. It was blocked to certain locations. I should say it was blocked everywhere except for certain locations. And so that was really important, understanding how ACLs work, also how ACLs apply from top to bottom. Very common thing that we see at tier two. After this, I'd just say general VPN configurations, understanding what a VPN is, how a point to site VPN actually works, how VPN client configuration works with having an appliance in our server. Just a general idea of what a VPN is and how it works, super duper important. Something that we see quite a bit, we do a lot of VPN troubleshooting, general client side VPN troubleshooting, but being able to identify, hey, is it one device? Are, is everyone having this issue? Am I able to reach the VPN appliance URL? Are there other things going on? Super duper common, not as networky for me, more just troubleshooting. A couple more honorable mentions, those DNS zones that I was talking about. I got a little bit more system administrator with the DNS, talking about public DNS and internal DNS zones, but still important to understanding how clients resolve domain names and what they're actually using to resolve domain names. Lastly, I just think a couple more honorable mentions. DHCP scope, again, is super important. Switches and how they stack and can have redundancy and also understanding that there's a trunk port between two switches and you're gonna see dynamic MAC addresses on one switch, even though devices maybe aren't plugged into that switch. All of the MAC addresses will show on that one trunk port. That's important. I've toiled over some time before, before realizing that, oh man, the device actually isn't plugged into this switch. It's plugged into another switch. That's trunk port plugged into this switch. That's important. And then lastly, I just think general CCNA commands specifically around switching and layer two for me. I'm certain layer three is gonna, gonna come into play more if I ever become a network engineer, if I decide to do something like that. Right now it's hasn't been useful at all. I, again, I never use OSPF. I never really look at routing tables. I never do anything like that. But the layer two stuff has been super, super important. So generally, I think in conclusion, the important thing to understand is subnets, how a device gets an IP address, what its default gateway is, what DNS is, and then being able to trace traffic from one device to another device to verify connectivity. That's what we're constantly using. And then those two commands, ncpa.cpl in Windows and network reset, absolutely clutch. Try it out, practice with yourself, let me know what you think. I hope this video has been useful to you. I hope I haven't rambled on too much. I just wanted to try and get all my thoughts on a video, on a piece of paper, where it's like, hey, this is what I use networking wise for my job every single day. So hope it's been helpful for y'all. Really appreciate you. Have an amazing day. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions.